Right now, closing arguments in the defamation case against Donald Trump are underway in the New York federal court. But here's some of the latest. Court started 10 minutes late with the judge asking Ms. Haba, is your client intending to be here this morning? He's talking about Donald Trump. My control room just got in my ear saying that Donald Trump also just walked out of court in the middle of closing arguments as the prosecution is up first. Carol is seeking more than $10 million in damages from the former president. And before the jury walked in, there's a lot going on. The judge reminded everyone that they have to stay quiet during closings, saying this, quote, there are to be no interruptions by anybody, no audible comments by anybody else. And now Trump, we know, has walked out. Joining me now to talk more about this is former federal prosecutor Renato Mariotti. Renato, there's a whole lot going on in this is closing arguments. I mean, I've got you've got uh, you've got Haba being asked if Donald Trump is going to show up. He shows up tw 10 minutes late. The judge warning nobody, everybody to not have disruptions. And then I'm just hearing in my ear that Donald Trump has walked out of court. Why is that? Are closing arguments normally this eventful? No, uh, but I will say that one strategy, Kate, uh, that defense counsel use sometimes, even in criminal trials, is to try to distract the jury when the prosecution is giving their closing argument. I, I think that, you know, part of what's going on here is there's an attempt to create a circus, distract from the evidence, distract from all of the comments that Trump has made in the past that are, are coming back to haunt him here. And so, you know, there. I think part of why they're, you know, he's arriving late and he's coming in and out is partly to keep the jury focused on him rather than the arguments that E. Jean Carroll's attorney, uh, Robbie Kaplan, are making. A couple things here. Uh, he wanted the attention on him definitely yesterday for that. I mean, it was like a momentary um, period of time that he took the stand. What do you think he and his legal team got out of it? What do you think the impact of Donald Trump being on the stand will be? He was being put on the stand to try to slip in some comments to say that essentially he didn't do this. It's, you know, he didn't actually sexually assault E. Jean Carroll and so on. That is not legally relevant. The jury in a prior trial already found that he did do that. Um, but nonetheless, there, there's an attempt here to almost try to nullify the law, to have the jury uh, return a verdict that's not consistent with uh, the verdict, for example, in the prior case. And the judge had no part in it. That's why it was so short, uh, Kate. That's why the judge shut it down very quickly. Now to today and in this moment, prosecution is up first, making... Uh, make, that it's a, I don't even know if we call prosecution is up first, but I mean, it, 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 they're up first. They're making their closing argument. What is the case that they need to, how do they bring it home? So the plaintiff is going to be really focused, the, the E. Jean Carroll's attorney, to be really focused on Donald Trump essentially thumbing his nose at this process. It, you know, he claims he never uh, assaulted uh, and, and sexually assaulted E. Jean Carroll. You know, he made, he was going after her, riling people up against her. And once a, a jury found that he did so, he kept doing it again and again and again. And I actually think that her attorney, um, E. Jean Carroll's attorney, is going to be really pointing to the fact that Donald Trump continues to be essentially thumbing his nose at the process throughout the trial. She's going to use what he's trying to do, you know, his attempts to introduce uh, his own uh, private feelings about this against him. Um, and try to turn the tables on him, and we'll see whether or not that works. Okay, so I'm getting a little more information about what came out, what happened with this walkout. And again, I was saying prosecution. I misspoke. It's plaintiffs. Um, it says, it's uh, from our reporters in the room, it's not clear why Trump left the courtroom. When Trump walked out, Ka Kaplan was in the middle of telling the jury that Trump did not respect the prior jury verdict, quote, not even for 24 hours. After, uh, this is Roberta Kaplan, by the way, not the judge. Um, the plaintiff's attorney who was speaking there. After Trump left, Judge Lewis Kaplan briefly interrupted Roberta Kaplan to say the record will reflect that Mr. Trump just rose and walked out of the courtroom. It's just all of this playing out in real time is fascinating, Renato. Absolutely. I mean, he really is thumbing his nose at the process. He's thumbing his nose at the judge. At one point, Kate, today, the judge even hinted that uh, I'm, I'm hearing reports that he hinted that perhaps he's going to send Trump's lawyer into lockup. 
uh, you know, this is an attempt to try to create this into a circus because Trump, I think, wants everyone, the public, um, the jury, to focus on the circus and the distraction rather than what happened here because there's really not a, a defense. Uh, you know, if you um, find and the jury has already found in the prior trial that he engaged in sexual assault, um, the fact is he defamed E. Jean Carroll. And essentially what her attorneys are arguing for is that punitive damages are necessary to hold him accountable and to deter him from doing this again. And so um, very challenging from a legal perspective, but of course he's trying to turn this into a distraction uh, rather than uh, a legal proceeding. And, a can and part of his ca a campaign strategy. To the point of, of the quote that you just cited, I have the reporting here from our reporters in the room. Just before the jury went in, so let's go back to the beginning of the morning again, Alina Haba, Trump's attorney, tried to make a record to refute a ruling that the defense cannot use a slide they planned in their closing presentation. Judge Kaplan cut her off and said, quote, you are on the verge of spending some time in the lockup now. Sit down. Moving forward, the jury will get the case today. I think the decision was one hour, one hour for closings. How likely do you think they will return a verdict today? I think it's very likely they're going to return a verdict today, Kate. This has not been a long trial. It, and it's very straightforward issue. If they take a long time, that's good for Trump. It's, it's, in other words, this is a pretty straightforward case. The issue is just purely, you know, how much in damages is she entitled to? There can be some argument about that for sure, but I really think if, you know, if the uh, jury is just looking at the facts and law, they're going to return a decision today. If this drags on for days and days, um, you know, the Trump team's going to be uh, crossing their fingers and hoping for a good result. The control room just told me, Renato, that the judge just admonished the defense team once again in the courtroom. We're going to be bringing you uh, bringing updates as they come. Very eventful closing arguments in this def in this civil defamation trial. Renato Mariotti, it's great to see you. Thank you for jumping on.